Hey Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, I wanna teach you guys some tips and tricks for you guys to be successful with baby turtles of nearly every species. The formula that I'm gonna give you guys today will work for red ear sliders, map turtles, painted turtles, diamondback terrapins, cooters, musk turtles, mud turtles, young and juvenile box turtles, pink belly side necks, other species of side neck turtles, literally everything, nearly, almost everything. What else, what other turtles exist? So anyway, in today's video, I'm gonna walk you guys through how to be successful with a baby turtle of nearly any species. And the best part is that it's way more simple than people think think. Way more simple. So I'm going to teach you guys how to be successful. Look at this cute little turtle thing that I have. It can, it can either be happy or if I'm having a bad day, you flip it inside out and then it's, and then it's, oh, I'm mad. Anyway, before we get started with today's video, if you guys would like to support me in the channel and you learned something here today, please consider hitting the link right up over here and heading over to my Patreon because over there you get direct access to me. You can ask me more specific and in-depth questions. Also, sometimes I have baby turtles available and I will post them on there when they are ready. Also, a giveaway is coming up soon at some point later this summer, I guess. Summer's kind of over. Where's the time gone? Anyway, I'm a 45 year old man. I also have discounts on merch. You get videos a day early before they come out, behind the scenes access to photos and videos and things and just all that kind of fun stuff. Please consider checking that out. Everything that you support me on over there, it goes right back into the turtles. I literally spend zero dollars on myself. I don't need things. They do though. So anyway, let's let's go ahead and let me start showing you some things. All right, so you just got your little baby like quarter size red ear slider, map turtle, painted turtle, whatever it may be. And you're thinking, great, what the heck do I do now? If you're in that situation, you've come to the right place. Today, we're gonna be talking about, sorry, whoa, chill. We're gonna be talking about the three main things that you need for success in raising your little baby turtle. Now, no one of these three is gonna be more important than the other. They are in no particular order other than the order that I think of them in. So the number one thing that you are gonna want to provide your little baby turtle is nice clean water. Clean water just means that you change their water fairly frequently and regularly. And that if you start seeing a bunch of garbage and whatnot at the bottom of their enclosure, this is a mild example, but if it's starting to get discolored and gross, you change it out. Even if the water doesn't look that nasty, I suggest changing out at least 20% of the water at least once a week. This really just keeps you on top of things and there is an exact science to doing water changes but we won't get into that today. That involves getting a test kit and testing your water parameters and basically you just need your ammonia to be zero and your nitrates to not be that high. If you can get away with that by doing a water change maybe once every two weeks or three weeks, good for you. But just to play things safe for some new keepers, you're gonna want to change out that water nice and frequently especially if you're feeding them in their little enclosure. So first off, the first thing that you're gonna want is clean and heated water, I should mention. You want this water clean and heated to about 82, 83 degrees Fahrenheit. Baby turtles are born, of course, during the warmer seasons, during the summer, so you do not want them to be in an enclosure that's gonna get cold because it also makes them more susceptible and at risk for infection and things that are not so good. Just because any sickness or disease, like a just a small cold in like a baby turtle can can be deadly the same way in people something that's not as serious in an adult is going to be devastating in a young animal using something like a water heater i can crank this temperature to a nice and warm 82.9 degrees. This will also boost the metabolism of my little baby turtles, make them more hungry, and help them grow a little bit faster than normal. So here's one of my little babies born just about two months ago who's growing really nicely in this little enclosure because they have clean and heated water. Now look at this little baby spotted turtle right here. Now what the heck is she doing? Little peanut right there is hiding. She is burying herself under that little piece of wood and behind these little plants because she is a baby and everything in the wild will eat a baby turtle. Therefore, the second thing that you need the most to take care of your baby turtle is some type of cover or plant material. They don't have to necessarily be live plants. Right here, 
Please focus, I have a bunch of fake plants. And actually fake plants might be more beneficial just because they won't harbor as much garbage as the live ones because mine are kind of starting to die. But yes, fake plants, it provides cover. It provides a place for all these little babies to hide in. And without it, they will be very, very stressed out, which is not a good thing and can negatively impact your little baby, which you don't want to do. So in a small, simple setup like I have right here, this is literally a concrete mixing tub. I've got clean, heat heated water and I achieve this by changing 100% of the water every three days and keeping a little filter and a nice little heater. We've got some beautiful fake plants here which makes things actually kind of look good and it helps the babies have somewhere to hide. And now the final thing that I provide for these little guys, boom! is a UVB light. UVB radiation is necessary for little baby turtles to synthesize vitamin D3 and basically calcium. And without it, they can get metabolic bone disease, which is a big scary sounding thing because it is, it's, it's deadly in turtles. Essentially their bones get all brittle and it's just bad stuff. So UVB or some form of supplemental vitamin D3, such as in calcium, I think I might have some right here. There we go with vitamin D3 is extremely important and you just dust this on their food, give them some UVB, and they should have nice, strong, and hard shells. That's it! That's it! Warm, heated water, fake plants for them to hide in, and UVB and vitamin D3. That's it. Any type of big time turtle breeders or keepers keep their animals much like the way that I do here. Actually, let's head outside and see how people keep turtles on a much larger scale. It's just, I do it on a small scale, but a better example, whatever, let's go. Okay, so out here I have my two little baby turtle tubs. Literally no filtration needed because I change their water every three days. Little fake plants here, a little basking spot, just a little cave thing. I don't know. I usually don't like to provide something like that because I'm afraid that they can dry out. But anyway, look at these little babies. There's one there, there's one over here, and there's one over here, and there's one more that's hiding. You're hiding right here. Okay, <laughs> okay, chill out, buddy. You don't need a filter if you're gonna be changing their water every three days. Like I said, filters are only there to ensure that the water quality stays high. And if you can accomplish that without a filter, you don't need one. Most baby turtles being raised, this is literally all they need. And not only that, but 90 some odd percent of them also will eat this stuff. Now this will grow your turtles nice and smooth and beautifully, and they love to eat it. I actually can skip trying to feed them bloodworms now because I just feed this food. Normally when baby turtles hatch, originally I try to get them to eat bloodworms and then I switch over to pellets. Not now, they are loving this stuff. So check it out, how cool are these guys? I would keep a baby slider, a baby map turtle, a baby mud turtle, musk turtle, pink belly side neck, or any other type of side neck, I would keep them all this same way. And here's the kicker. As they grow, all I'm going to do is increase the water level. I'm gonna keep it nice and shallow so that way there's no drowning hazard for them at first, even for the ones that are good swimmers. But as they grow, I can just raise the water level or just increase the size of the tub until they're you know, this big or so. And this is literally all I have to do is just feed the little babies and, and that's it. And they just eat and grow. It's really easy to take care of baby turtles and people overcomplicate it so much. Hi babies. Even as far as how much to feed them, guys, look, I'm just tossing them food until they're done eating and I do this two or three times a day. And that's it. I just get a feel for how much they can eat, feed them that twice, maybe three times a day. It's really not crazy. People turn it into this crazy science. What do I need to follow? What do I need to do exactly? Shoot, man, if I had a baby box turtle, I would keep them in an enclosure just like this with about Eh, one to two inches less of water. I would keep them in just a little bit of shallow, warm water with fake plants and UVB, and that is a perfect baby box turtle tub to ensure that they have the proper humidity. Most breeders keep them in stuff like this on racks, either outside or in a heated turtle room with big strips of UVB lighting, and that's it. I'm just doing a little health checkup on one of these little babies here, you can see. The yolk sac is all nice and healed up. They're starting to put on some nice little bit of growth. And these little babies are just doing absolutely excellent in these types of enclosures that I'm talking to you guys about. So let's see how quickly they can go from this little itty bitty size to something inside. We're gonna look at the ornate Diamondback Terrapins, which used to be this big not 20 days ago, and now they look like this. Bam, 20 days of growth. And look at this 
hatchling terrapin using the aforementioned method. Check it out. This little one has been living down here since it was that big, that little, little tiny quarter sized baby. And now they're like pushing two inches, some of them, just with a little UVB, some plants. I got some cuddle bone for a calcium supplement, a little filter to take the edge off of some water quality, a beautiful heater at 83 degrees, and we've got some happy, healthy baby turtles. So anyways, folks, oh, I got a little baby turtle pellet on me. That is gonna do it for today's video. I just wanna express that's how most people raise 90 some odd percent of their baby turtles. UVB, warm, clean water, and some fake plants to hide in. That's it, baby. That's how you guys can get some nice, perfect, smooth growth. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can check out what little turtles I have living in there now. Don't look too closely. Comment down below what type of baby turtle that you guys own, and I'll see y'all in the next one.